With the deployment of the ZGMF 1017 Jin, Zaft had successfully created the first ever mobile suit. But they weren't about to just rest on their laurels. They immediately began to extensively research the performance of the Jin in real life and how its pilots used it. All of this data was then compiled and used to develop the Jin's successor unit, the ZGMF 515 Saigu, sometimes also pronounced as the Shigu. And even though we now commonly associate the Saigu with commanders, at its inception it was actually meant as nothing more than a refined version of the Jin with the same basic design philosophy. A general purpose machine whose main focus was space combat but was still versatile enough to perform very well on Earth. As a result, it can be said that the only really revolutionary change from the Jin was the brand new M7070 28mm Vulcan system shield that was mounted on the left arm. The main goals for this weapon were incorporating both offensive and defensive systems into one thingy and to increase the ability of the Saigu to fight multiple enemies at once, or in other words, to give the Saigu more to take down the hordes of Alliance mobile armors. It would also inspire the design of the Gwais and the Providence's shield, and it is possible that it had anti-beam coating. Its other main weapons then were simply upgraded versions of those used by the Jin. Instead of the MAM-3, which was stored on the Jin's left hip, it used the MAM-4 heavy blade which was stored on the Saigu's right wing. And instead of the MMI M8A3, it used the MMI M7S 76mm heavy assault machine gun. The biggest difference was that it used the stronger APS-V armor piercing round instead of the HVAP used by the Jin. The Saigu can also store extra magazines for this gun at an unknown location, and just like the Jin's gun, it can be set to either semi-automatic for precision firing or full automatic for rapid fire. In addition to this, the Saigu is of course still compatible with all of the Jin's handheld weaponry, but on one occasion it was even seen using the Gwaze's beam rifle. Which then raises the question, if the Saigu was forwards compatible with beam weaponry, or if that particular Saigu was modified to be compatible. Because after this, we never see another Saigu using beam weaponry, even though by the time of the Second Bloody Valentine War, when the Saigus were still being deployed, beam weapons had become the standard handheld weapons. In terms of performance then, the biggest changes with the Jin were the thrusters. To turn the Saigu into a highly mobile machine, it had more and stronger thrusters, and its armor was also revamped to focus more on cooling these high-performance thrusters. And all of these improvements led to a deadly machine that was especially dangerous at close range. Pre-production units were rushed out to commanders as soon as possible, and the verdict was unanimous. The Saigu's performance was just as good in real life as it was on paper. But just as it was about to enter mass production, something happened. The La Crusade team managed to track down the Alliance's top secret G weapons, and on top of that, they captured four of the five units. Maybe if the people on board of the Archangel had used NordVPN to hide their location, all of this could have been prevented. So don't let this happen to you and use the link down below or the code KKRT to get a sweet discount on Nord and to also support the channel. It's my daily driver for getting access to region locked content. The technology then that Zaft managed to extract from these units was both amazing and horrifying at the same time. They had been under the assumption that the naturals were too inferior to ever even hope to build a mobile suit. But now, they had made five prototypes that didn't just exceed their current main machine, but far exceeded even their next main machine. To put it lightly, 
Zaft went into full panic mode and all of the resources from the Saigu were instead poured into their next, next main machine, the Gwais. This mobile suit now had to become the perfect combination of both Zaft's own technology and the tech they stole from the Alliance's G-weapons. Overnight, the Saigu went from Zaft's next generation mass production mobile suit to a stopgap until the real next generation machine could enter production. But because of this, it would become remembered more as an ace machine as the few Saigus that were still made were mostly given to commanders and ace pilots. But this wasn't the end for the Saigu. Sure, it was already decided that it was going to be replaced by the Guays, but it would still be months before the first units would be combat ready. And in those months, some variants of the Saigu did pop up. One thing that Zaf liked to do early on in the first Bloody Valentine War was to outfit their mobile suits with a composite armor system known as the Assault Shroud. The aim of this was to increase a mobile suit's offense, defense and speed to make it better suited for an ace pilot. And the most well known examples of this are the Jin and the Dual Gundam. But the Saigu also received its own version of the system, turning it into the ZGMF 515 AS Saigu Assault. But unlike the Jin and the Duel, the Assault Shroud of the Saigu was mainly focused on increasing its already superb speed and maneuverability. As a result, most of the add-on parts consisted of extra thrusters which were powerful enough to give the Saigu Assault atmospheric flight capabilities. It also received some extra armor, with the chest armor also serving as extra cooling for the new thrusters, and it got a slight firepower increase in the form of an extra Vulcan shield on the right arm. However, by the time that the Saigu's Assault Shroud was made, the system was actually falling out of favor. Supposedly, Zaft had planned to make Assault Shrouds for each of their first generation mobile suits, but they would instead change to make dedicated Ace mobile suits instead. Think for example, the Baku and the Lego. So as a result, the Saigu Assault was a very rare machine with very little information available on their actual combat records. And ironically enough, it would be most famously used by Xist Elwes, a half natural half coordinator who fought for the Earth Alliance. This particular Saigu and its assault shroud were captured and were painted in a very distinctive crimson color scheme. But rather than being Xist's personal colors, this very flashy color scheme was actually forced upon him by the Alliance leadership for various reasons. The most important one was of course that he was a half coordinator, so not everyone was very trusting of him and they wanted an easy way to tell where he was at all times. The second reason though was more valid. Whenever Xist used the Assault Shroud, he would turn into a robotic killing machine who would attack both friend and foe. So a very good reason to know where he is at all times. And because of this, he would also be nicknamed the Chaos Child. But despite disliking the Assault Shroud for the aforementioned reason, Xist would use it in case of emergency and it was also slightly different compared to its Zaft counterpart. Some of the internals were upgraded and it also got a pair of shoulder binders. These had a twin Gatling on each and also further improved the Saigu's speed and in atmospheric flight capabilities. Another upgrade then for the standard Saigu came in the form of the Vern Multipurpose Flight Unit, also dubbed the Meteor Kai. Now, according to Hobby Japan's Gundam Seed Model Volume 3 Seed MSV Edition, these meteor units were used to extend the service life of the Jin and the Saigu after the introduction of the Guays. This booster had a built-in nuclear engine with accompanying N-Jammer Canceller and therefore gave the mobile suit that it was equipped to access to more powerful beam weapons in addition to a bunch of missiles, just to be sure. 
And if this still wasn't enough firepower, the quote-unquote arms could also be replaced with the arms of the standard meteor. But now we go back to the capture of those 4G weapons and their technology. Zaft, of course, immediately went to work analyzing them, and one of the first machines they created with this new technology was the experimental YFX 200 Saigu Directional Energy Emission Experimental Armaments Type, or the Saigu Deep Arms for short. A variant of the standard Saigu that was made to test out the beam technology they got from the Alliance. But despite being a big step up from Zaft's previous attempt at mobile suit-sized beam weaponry, it still had some significant downsides. The first and most obvious one was that compared to the Alliance's beam rifles, the two JDP-8 MSY-0270 directed thermal energy cannons were still as large and unwieldy as their name. But this was a deliberate design choice by the Zaft engineers. Its large size was mainly due to the energy generators and the cooling systems, both of which were allowed to be as bulky as needed for the highest reliability. <laughs> The way the cooling worked was also very different from that on the Alliance machines. Their gas cooled and with every shot, some of this gas was released. Meaning that if insufficient gas was left, an automatic safety will be triggered and stop the cannons from being fired. This safety can be manually disengaged in case of emergency, but doing so will of course risk destroying the barrel of the cannon. So despite being made to be as reliable as possible, they were still far from perfect. But at the same time, they were eventually made reliable enough for the Saigu Deep Arms to be sent into the field and their data would prove to be invaluable for Zaft's future beam weaponry. And to further support the use of these cannons, the machine also received a new antenna, a new mohawk, and a new sensor suite to improve its accuracy. In addition to its beam cannons then, it also had the new NOL Y941 heavy laser sword. A sword that was based on the combat data from their fights with the sword strike and was developed in about three weeks and it was also seen carrying the machine gun that was used by the standard Saigu. Other changes then included new thrusters and slightly different shoulders because of the beam cannons and completely overhauled legs. Four of these experimental units would be made, with the most famous one being used by Shio Hanenfus, who got the nickname Hosenka while using this unit. Even after the introduction of the superior and more stable Gwaze, she would continue using the unit and try to fine-tune it to further improve the reliability of the not quite so stellar cooling system that the machine had to use. But with the end of the first bloody Valentine War also came the end of the Saigu Deep Arms. It was used one more time during the interwar period, but after that it was never seen again. And finally, there is also one slightly less canonical version of the Saigu that only appeared in the Gundam Seed RE manga. At some point, Le Creuset Saigu is equipped with an early experimental version of the Dragoon system, but unlike the system used by the Providence Gundam, this version still used wires to guide the pods. Although, it is possible that the pods could be controlled wirelessly and that they were simply introduced as a failsafe, just like they did with the Dreadnought's Dragoon system. Furthermore, this Saigu also had a new antenna, and it used a shield that was very similar to that of the Gwaze. And this is where the Saigu's development history ends. 
but also doesn't because its frame was also used to develop another one of Zaft's main mobile suits, the Din. But that is a story for another time. For now, let's just hope that someday Bandai decides to make a Saigu Assault Gunpla. Don't forget to check out NordVPN with the link down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.